We 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 here. Hello. Hello. We're back. That is good. I mean, you're still on. We're not. Ah. Oh, I thought. I think. A second. Bye bye. We're good. We're good. We're good. Awesome. So I guess quit it. Oh my god. Sorry about that. We almost lost it for a second. I'm like, oh my god, what's going on? Awesome. I guess you see. Yes. Yes. So we are. Put that on down. Hello. Hello. We're back. So good. Thank you for everyone staying on. So as you were saying, God permitted you to walk away. Yes. So um I did that Sunday. I, my parent, we had Prophet Glenda Jackson as a guest speaker in our church. And my parents had been begging and pleading for me to come to church. And um, I eventually did just because I didn't feel safe at home and I hadn't yet told them what was going on or what I'd just escaped. So I wasn't ready to talk about it. So I went along primarily because I didn't want to be home on my own and be vulnerable. Um, so I went to church. I sat at church, sat right at the back. And um, one of the people who knew me in the ministry, she dragged me to the front of the church and Prophet Gender, Glenda Jackson was standing there with my parents around. She didn't know who I was. She didn't know that, she, that my parents were my parents. She just thought I was this random young girl who someone had dragged to the front of the altar. And she began to pray over me. And she said to me that God had been basically chasing me down and there'd been a spotlight in heaven and God was calling me home. And she said, you have been in a relationship with someone who's been sent by the enemy in assignment to take your life. And she just called out the whole situation I've been going through and how God supernaturally delivered me and rescued me and saved my life. Um, but a lot of that journey for me had come from connecting my identity with people that I shouldn't have done because I felt alone and I didn't belong. And then even coming out of that abuse, so much of my identity had been shut down because that's what abuse does is you shut down your voice. You, I was told what clothes I could wear and what clothes I couldn't wear. And I was told what I could look like and what I couldn't look like. And everything about my own will and my own choices and exploring who I was and what made me me had been completely destroyed for those years that I was in that relationship. And so really part of the healing and the restoration for me out of that process was to discover my identity in God. And it's something that I, it took me a long time to do so much so that um, I didn't, I didn't enter any relationship for years after I had come out of that. I, I come out of that relationship and God was healing me and I ended up in ministry and um, just didn't take time for a relationship. Just wanted to be me and God and just seek his will and, you know, work every hour that I could in the ministry. And that was really my passion. And I didn't really have a passion for anything else. And so <clears throat> a number of years later, when I had thought my healing had been finished, because now it's been years and I'd been in ministry already for years and I thought I knew who I was and my ministry was taking me all over the world. And so I felt secure at that time and who God had created me to be. And we had a traveling ministry come over to us in England um, I'd be confident in saying that's probably the, the, the most well-known ministry on earth, um, globally known. They came to our church and to our ministry, and I ended up marrying one of the people in that ministry. And it was not a man of God. And I found myself married to somebody, again, abusive, controlling, and repeat the cycle, basically. And so again, God had to come in and supernaturally deliver me from that. And it was only after that experience when I realized that I had concealed, I'd learned to live with my scars. So when I came back into the house of the Lord out of my journey of abuse when I was 21, I had some things I'd healed from and some things I'd dealt with. Other things were like limps I'd learned to live with. Mm -hmm. And so I just learned to accept that I didn't really love myself, but it was okay because God loved me. And I think as women, we do that a lot. Well, I don't like this about me, but God loves me. Or, you know, this is right. Which is right. 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 It is all a limp that you are learning to live with and you're concealing the real heart issue and making excuses to stay broken. And it was only at the end, um, navigating that season of divorce, I actually took myself away and I moved to America for a season. God took me out of ministry, took me out of my environment and planted me in America for a year. 
And that whole year I plugged into God is my father, me as a daughter. I didn't do any ministry. I just had time for me and God and for him to restore me and to build me and to rewire me. And I laid it all out before him. And if I had not have done that, then I'm convinced I would have repeated that cycle again. And so for me, I believe in deliverance. I believe in supernatural deliverance. And, um, you know, Apostle Mike Connell was one of the people who journeyed through my divorce with me daily, him and his wife, um, Pastor Joy. And we, they have a deliverance ministry where they believe in the supernatural deliverance, but there's also a heart process. And God uses process to get us to purpose. That's when right. the purpose for you, the way to get you from potential to purpose is process. And so there are seasons like this he allows for the purpose of the process to get you to your purpose, your destination. And if we just want to be rescued of that supernaturally and supernaturally put back together, then you don't do the process and God can't unveil his ultimate purpose. And, 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 so I, want, and I want you to touch base on that because at least in New York City, I would say, because you know, that's where I'm at now. And when we talk about the millenniums, right? And, and this, this skepticism and there's a lot of critics when it comes to them that even even at the church even as a christian many people want to go and get blessed yeah. but they don't want to go through the process and when they hear pain they're like nah i don't i don't want that i, I don't want to deal with that but then it's this block that we place and we attend a congregation but we never open up to God, our leaders, our pastors. So there's really no healing because you cannot heal on what you're being in denial, right? So we don't want to face, like, it's like I tell some, even when I talk to different um, females at the church and young ladies, I'm like, you need to know God wants to heal you. I mean, maybe you don't have, you, you know, maybe, probably you don't trust a person at this moment. Maybe you've been raped. Maybe you've been abused. Maybe your parents rejected you. You know, maybe your dad denied you. Maybe he didn't want you to be an abortion. God knows the story, but even through that, he's still alive. So when we start talking, many say, I, I don't want to touch that part, right? I don't want to face reality. Um, but in this walk, you have to face reality. Yeah. God, I mean, the more, and, and I tell people, probably you don't trust me enough to open up to me, but you could go to God. Yeah. And, and you know, ask the Lord to reveal to you who's going to help you through this process. You know, who's going to be literally, it's like your spiritual mom through this process. Because the truth is, like I tell people and I tell every young person or, every, you know, whoever God sends in my life is, I've been through a lot in this walk for the glory of God. But guess what? I always had great mentors. I had a person that was sent for a season and they will help me cope with things. They will teach me through those seasons. And that's the reason the wisdom came in, the knowledge came in. Because I allowed those times, I, mean, I was a student and I mean, you know, um, Dr. Marina McLean always tells me, God will always send, a, you know, a, a teacher when the student is ready. So many people want the healing, but they just say it, but they don't mean it. So I want, I mean, if you can even give a word to those that are watching, the females and the men and the young people, that they need to deal with the pain, you know, and, and even allow God to work, you know, that healing process, because there's a need. It's a hundred percent a need. And actually what you do, if you, and I'll put it this way, this is a simple way for me to explain. And this is, this is some advice from Apostle Mike Connell when he was walking through this with me. Whenever you leave something isolated or undealt with, what you actually do is you freeze it. So if you have a brokenness in your heart and you don't process that pain and heal, what you do is you actually cement it in there. You freeze it. Mm -hmm. And you can actually create a soul tie to an event. You can create a soul tie to a trauma because you freeze it and it becomes a permanent structure. And the area of brokenness will just fester and fester and fester. One thing I would say, it's a good indicator of where you've got brokenness because a lot of people where you learn to walk with a limp, you're unaware of the brokenness that's still lying there. Or what happens is we, we dumb down or we make small things that have affected us massively. And so you may think your teacher speaking over you that you're never going to make it when you're five was a small thing. And so why would that affect you? But actually you think it's a small issue, but when somebody speaks to you about process or progress or how great a school is, it touches a nerve. 
And so when we look at the nerves, what touches a nerve in your heart, it's a good identifier to reveal to you areas of brokenness in your life that you have either made smaller than they are, <clears throat> or you've forgotten about, or you've learned to live with and haven't actually healed. And so what I want to ask you all at home, because we all have these areas, what is it that brings a reaction in you that you can't quite explain? Maybe somebody talks about finances, or maybe somebody talks about marriage, or or maybe you had a relationship and you were rejected and every time somebody asks you if you've found someone yet, it sparks a nerve. Why does it do that? Why do you have a reaction? Yes, you have a reaction there because of an insecurity or a brokenness. And so consider and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you areas that you react to and the root of those areas. Where is there a brokenness that I have not dealt with? And when you freeze a brokenness, when you leave that pain undealt with, it will stay there and it will become a freeze moment. You can actually become freezed emotionally to that moment in time through a freeze event in your heart that you haven't dealt with. It is very, very, very important to process healing. And the one thing I would say with that, just to encourage you in this journey, because it's not an easy journey. Every journey of healing will ultimately require ownership humility and repentance in my situation i was i don't receive i did for a while and it was a very dark place for me to be in it was a, it was an ungodly place to, for me to be in but for a while i found fault with myself i deserved what happened to me and you know it was my fault and when you're abused a lot of the time this is how you're conditioned to think the abuse that's not just physical you're made to feel like it's your fault and so that is something a mindset that i had to heal and recover from so that I knew I didn't deserve what had happened to me. But I did in a godly way have to take ownership for stepping out of line of God's will for my life, realizing what I had strayed from his word, realizing and taking ownership of that and repenting to God. And so whenever you deal with an area of brokenness and you're in your healing journey, you have to consider the pain that you felt a lot of the time what we're uncomfortable with is realizing how to forgive people for example sometimes people say that forgiveness is free and this is actually not true when we look at the account in the bible the parable about the the man who owed a certain debt and had been released from his debt and somebody owed him a greater amount and he was trying to hold them accountable this whole package speaks of forgiveness and a lot of the time we say forgiveness is just in your heart and it's free and you can hide it out. That's not true. Forgiveness has a cost. And this is why a lot of people are stuck and frozen in the air of forgiveness and haven't actually learned to forgive or let go. For you to forgive somebody that hurt you, you have to evaluate that pain, count that cost, and then release it. You can't release something that you haven't counted. And so when it talks about somebody having a death and he'd been forgiven and then he held somebody else to account, it's because he looked at the amount, although the other person owed less, he evaluated that cost. And so you can't blindly forgive somebody that's denial. When you've been hurt by somebody and you need to recover of that pain, it is right. It is a healthy process to evaluate and to grieve over everything that you've lost and to say, this is the season I've been through. This is how I've been hurt. This is what I have lost. This is how this has affected me. Grief and process where you're at with that. And then can you release it to God? But you can't release something to God you haven't counted. So you count your experience. You, you evaluate the destruction it's caused. You grieve and you deal with the pain of that. And you, you choose to give that and release that to God whilst taking ownership of how much God has already released you and forgiven you, the grace that God has shown you and repent for any error in your life. Maybe it's not something you did like me, where I chose to walk away from God and align myself with ungodly people. Maybe it's as simple as doubting God's plan for your life, doubting his word for you. Maybe it's, it's taking ownership and repenting for choosing to discontinue obeying God in a certain area or not standing for firm in prayer or whatever it is that you that you need to take ownership over but there will always be an element of ownership and ownership people don't want to take ownership over their own pain because sometimes it the devil can use that to put you into a place of guilt but actually ownership is empowering because and this is the way that i had to process it when i looked at my abusive relationship and then navigating through my divorce I looked for areas that I could take ownership over and repent of because the empowering thing about that is I can then change the pattern going forward. 
if I, I've got no control over what anybody else does, I've only got control over me and my decisions and how I walk with God. And so if you never take ownership and you always make excuses and if you're always the victim in every situation, then the cycle continues because nothing about that environment has changed. But when you take ownership and you identify, actually, this is an area I didn't stand firm in my faith in, or this is an area I didn't hold out for my miracle, whatever that areas of ownership that you have to take and repent for in your brokenness, that is what will start to shift the cycle. But it is imperative to count your pain, process what's happened, release people, understand how God has forgiven you, and to move forward in those pain. We know that you can speak to mountains and see mountains move, but sometimes people have to see you move mountains to get the faith to speak to theirs. That's it. So that's something that I consider now to be an honor. When I, the season of divorce was particularly painful and the abuse, the abuse was painful. But at the other end of those, actually what Apostle Mike Connell said to me when I was journeying through with him, the day he said to me that I had completed, if you like, my journey, he said, do you know how I know that you're healed? And this had been about a year and a half after the divorce. And I said, how? And he said, I knew that you were healed the day that you shifted from accepting what had happened to being grateful for it. And so once I actually was thanking God for what I had been through because of what he had supernaturally been able to do through that, that would never have happened if that, if I hadn't have gone through that season and I'd seen a completely different group of women I was able to minister to. That's it. People's attitudes changed before. Before I had experienced divorce, I had people who were kind of cold thinking, oh, what do you know? And, you know, you don't know what it's like to experience this. And life for you must be so easy. And people who had been quite cold towards me before what I'd been through, I had seen rally around me and hug me and kiss me. And God had given me access to speak into their lives and minister from a place of wisdom and experience because God builds you in your process. He builds you in compassion. He builds you in experience through pain. That's how God builds you in compassion and love and experience is through pain. And so what I'd seen God be able to do and how he'd use that through what I experienced is when I celebrated what I went through. But it was a process and it's important to navigate that entire process. And I, I mean, I love the part of ownership. Um, being in front of a ministry, I've seen that that is the hardest part for people to even come up from accepting where they failed. Yeah. And, and it, it's a struggle because many people feel that if I hide it, it did not happen. Right. Instead of saying I made a mistake, yeah. forgive me and let's move on. Yeah. Simple words. As a child of God, I've learned, as you were stating earlier, it's, it's a mindset. I mean, if you look at problems and never look for solutions, it's going to be a big issue. Yeah. And many people just look like, you know what, I fell God, I'm done. I feel, I, I'm, and then they just land in condemnation and never get out of it. Yeah. Right? So one of my biggest pain that I've, I experienced for myself, um, my, little, my little brother died three days before I got married. Before that, I didn't even know a person could be so blocked in pain mm -hmm. that your mind shuts off. Yeah. Yeah. I I literally I was on my way to Long Island to pick up my the suits for the groomsman. I get a call, call your mother, she needs you. That's like a Thursday, um, it was a Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Oh, Saturday I was getting married. So it was a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Saturday I got married. Sunday I'm in a funeral home. On a Monday is a girl. And oh gosh. that made me, I mean, as soon as I got the call, um, called your mother, your little brother just died. I literally, my mother said yesterday, I was in the back of the car. My heart is like they touched it. It went hard. I literally landed from the, I was in the back seat of the car. I landed on my knees. I put my hands up and I started speaking in tongues because it was so much pain going on that I literally went into like a panic attack. Yeah. And it took almost three months for me to even cry. Yeah. I never knew you could reach a level of pain 
that your mind tells you one thing, but your heart, and my heart started speeding, and for basically three months, I felt like I was dying, like I couldn't catch my breath. Yeah. And it was a major attack upon my life. I couldn't even see my little brother in the casket. It was surreal. Yeah. The Lord used that death to bring Mars ministry. Right. He brought the people to me for me to minister. And the Lord promised us that every person that lands in our life would not die, but live in the Lord. Man. But people don't know that through your biggest problems and your biggest pain, the Lord, I mean, he will do things. Yeah. To this day, we don't know why, but he used that to build me up. Yeah. After that experience, I, would, I was never the same. I looked at life different. Life is short. Yeah. Be grateful. Yeah. Be thankful. It could always be worse. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, so many things. And, and, and many things. Many people, even that know me, they started praying for me because they're like, wow, this is, he was more than a brother. He was like my, like my son. I, I literally, my mom worked. I took care of him. But what really shocked me is that, and, and out of the whole experience, is that pain literally can make you lose your mind, even in the Lord. Yeah. And people don't get that, that we're still human. Yeah. We still cry. We still suffer. I mean, Jesus did it. He grew in stature. He grew in wisdom through the persecution. Yeah. And, you know, and the Lord, I, I, sometimes like, I tell people, you know what? Take life one day at a time. Yeah. And, and, you know, if you're called, just honestly stick with God, but you're going to make it out. Because many people, they block themselves and it's like, I'm never going to get out of this. Yes, you are. With the help of the Lord, you are. But it's a process. Right. I, I mean, it, I mean, I, I don't know how, how it worked with you, but it was so hard for me. I couldn't even look at my little brother's picture when he was alive because I would break down in tears. And supernaturally, one day I was just delivered from the pain. I thought, I'm like, Lord, like, what am I supposed to do? How do I tell people that I'm literally, like, I'm still crying over my brother's death? And that should be something natural. I mean, and, and it was painful. Yeah. It was such a hard topic that even my own pastors couldn't even touch base on because it was that hard, but I lived through it by the grace of the Lord. And you know, today I'm here today and I'm like, wow, I made it out. But just like you stated, it's, 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 we just have to face it, put it in God's hands as much as, you know, and, and, and you know, not bear with it, bear with it, but kind of just know that God is with us. And I mean, that's what helped me. I mean, I, I didn't take no medication for it. Thank God I didn't end up in a psychologist for it. It was just a presence. I wish God you need to help me. Lord, yeah. my mind. I mean, it, I couldn't connect my mind with my heart. Yeah. It, was, it was heavy. Yeah. I, like, you know, for, for moments, I thought I, my mind went blank because it was so much pain that I couldn't even bear with. You go numb. You emotionally crash. It's like everything is so big that it's too overwhelming to deal with. It's almost like when a computer, a computer gets overheated and it crashes is that everything is so big that there's no natural way to navigate those things and it freezes. And I, I had many experiences like that. My, my seasons were, there were things I couldn't deal with, I couldn't talk about, I couldn't be around. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't be around certain conversations. I navigated life very much like a robot at first. I was here having to wrap up some ministry assignments and engagements and church things for about um, six months before I could go in peace and private and, and kind of start my healing journey. And so for those six months, I was like a robot. I just went out, did my thing, got the job done, went home, shut down. I knew I couldn't touch it yet. I couldn't, it was almost like I was waiting till I knew that I was going to have enough space to open all of this up that I couldn't, I couldn't take the lid off to even have a peek until I knew that I could deal with it properly. And so I shut down completely. I also, for the first time in my life, suffered panic attacks and anxiety attacks. I had never, I've never been a fearful person. I've always been a very independent person. I, it's not an area I ever thought that I would struggle with. And I started to have panic attacks and anxiety attacks and I couldn't breathe and it would end up feeling like I was gonna have a heart attack or suffocate. And it was all of these were 
the pain and the, the emotions were so high that actually physically my body wasn't able to deal with it because we believe in the body, the soul and the spirit. So we understand that spiritually that there is a war and a battle going on, that there is a soul that's been broken and that there are effects of that. And there's also a physical body. And so chemically there are, when you understand how all of that functions together, although we know that the spirit has the sovereign rule and God overrules all of those things, those three dynamics are made to work cooperatively together. And so the body creates chemicals through stress that can overwhelm itself and it shuts down. And so you have to understand I'm still human, I'm still a person. And if my soul experiences this kind of fracture and breakage, the body will step in and create all of these hormones and, and chemicals to try and deal with that. And the effect of this is then this. And so you have to understand, give yourself grace. If there's something I can say, give yourself grace, be easy on yourself. And understand that brokenness is normal and it's okay to say that you need some time for you. But I want to emphasize the importance on it. We know that God is a God of legacy and a God of heritage. And this is something the Lord dealt with me very, very, very deeply because there were times that I didn't want to do the pain anymore. Dealing with the pain was too hard. I just wanted it to be over or just shut it off. And I'm like, no, I'm done. It's too hard to talk about. I don't want to cry anymore. I'm don't want to deal with this thing. Let's just ignore it and move on. Wow. God spoke to me and gave me a real word of urgency. When you experience trauma, even in the womb, biologically, they have now proven that that actually can alter DNA. So the actual DNA of your body will be, can be altered through a traumatic experience. Yes. Then changes the DNA line to the next generation. And so this is why they're seeing five-year-olds and four-year-olds having panic attacks and anxiety and depression and all these other things is because trauma actually reconstructs DNA. And so when you then have a child, you pass that broken DNA on to the next generation. And so dealing with pain, if you're not even motivated to do it for yourself, understand that you are lying, allowing a brokenness to corrupt the next generation. If you don't deal with it in your own life. And so this is something God laid on me very heavily was if you don't feel the faith or the love or the courage or the desire or the will to fight for your life anymore, because I had moments where that's how I felt, understand that you are corrupting the next generation. And so it's not an invitation to heal. It's an instruction. Even if today I feel so low that I don't even feel I'm worth fighting for my own life anymore. I know if I don't do that, I corrupt the next generation. That's, that's the, and you know, I, I stand with that. And I was thinking of, um, when I first came to the Lord, I was get, just like that this sort of like what you stated earlier, that you went back to church that day and prophet, um, um, she prophesied you what was happening. I'm going to step in into the church, our church, the first time. Um, and the Lord spoke to me through an apostle. And he said, who in your family practices witchcraft? And I'm like, what are they saying? And he's, he's like, there's a very evil person in your family that sold your soul to the devil. And I'm like, what? So, you know, I, I'm like... I'm, I'm like, I felt in my spirit because the Lord spoke to me through a dream to serve him. I go to a church seeking, like, is a church hopping, trying to find that right church where they're going to build me up. And then inside of the house of the Lord, I'm receiving, I'm like, what's going on? Yeah. And through the same prophecy, they told me, well, this is what happened. Someone in your family thought you slept with her husband. Okay. So she went ahead and sold your soul to the devil. And yeah. she made you prostituting yourself and going crazy. But God intervened because you're a prophet. So I, I'm like, so imagine stepping the first day into church and you being prophesied this. I'm like, what is this? I got out of church that day and I'm, I'm calling my mother. Like, this, you don't understand what happened at church today. They just prophesied this. She's like, you're crazy. But then I started matching my life up. And they said, this happened at age of 17. But it reached now. So from the very first day we stepping into a, you know, a church, a congregation, I'm like, God, the Lord said, I need to process you. 
meets yeah. the reality. This walk, we're going to walk it together. Yeah. I, I, yesterday, I, I, I was teaching on the power of a seed, and that seed is us. Yeah. And so we don't deal with the generation of curses and what's deep in those roots. There's no way we're going to multiply. Yeah. And, and, and many people, they put healing aside, thinking, you know what? I'm not going to face my problems. Yeah. I'm in the Lord. All things are made new, but they don't understand that the Bible says that it, it goes back four generations. So I tell, as soon as a person lands in Mars, I tell them, get a piece of paper and find out where you came from. Yes. What your great grandparents did, your, your grandparents, your mother and yourself, what's going on, why you are in the state you're in. Because it's very important. Because we with, you know, we're fighting the spiritual realm demonic forces, but sometimes it's not our fault. Yeah. Our great grandparents were involved. Maybe they lied in a contract. Maybe they, you know, I don't know what were they practicing, who they who they who they worship. Yeah. But then it come back to us is at least for my case, I'm the first one in my family to serve the Lord. Now we have much many, thank God for that. But it was hard. Yeah. And, and I, I remember just writing these things down like wow when I went through deliverance, I'm like Wow, this is important because and I and I kept asking my mom, what happened with her great grandparents? What happened with you? How was my how was how was it when you were pregnant with me? Right? What happened when, when, when you got married? Did you get married? Or you just slept with my with my father and you know out of what lot? Like I need to know this. Mm -hmm. and, and many people don't want to deal with the roots, but you know, those that are watching us, you need to go to the root. Because you might be fighting things that it's none of your business, but it is your business. Yeah. You have to, I mean, at least. That's how I see it. Even, you know, and, and one day, I guess we talk about how even, you know, how I ended up with Pastor Lewis. I met Pastor Lewis in the club. He was born and raised in the gospel, backslide. I met him at, at the age of 21. The dude is literally at a club with a fake ID. And, and I'm like, in my birthday, he was invited by a friend. And then the Lord's, you know, and I'm like, and, and after that, we connected. And then three years later, God calls me through a dream. And I'm like, what's going on? Then that same year, I found out that he also knew the Lord back then, but he backslid. But, you, you know, it's like, but it's all about we need to face and what we had to live. Even, I mean, the Lord took us apart for three years. I came, you know, that's when the Lord called me through a dream. We had to break apart because the Lord said, I need to heal you to where I'm taking you. Because I have to prepare you yeah. for the man I'm about to give you, Amen. which was Pastor Lewis, you know. And I'm like, wow, this is insane. And the Lord said, for these three years, you're going to fast. You're going to pray for him because as I'm working in you and building you up as a, as a child of God, as a woman of God, and preparing you for marriage, I'm going to be working in him, believe it or not. Yeah. And, you know, the story continues, of course. And now we're married, we're going 10 years and two kids and the ministry. But people need to understand that it's all healing involved. This doesn't, I mean, you don't end up in a, in a godly marriage overnight, it takes time. It takes, you know, it's a lot of healing processes. This is not an overnight thing. People say, oh, I come to the Lord, everything's going to be done. No, it takes time. I mean, we're not perfect. Paul said it, you know, we're walking towards perfection, but we're still not there. And it's a lot of stuff you do in this walk, especially if you're in ministry. You face things, I mean, challenges every single day of our lives. But I mean, I know we come into an end. And, and I thank God for every person watching. Uh, um, and I, I want us to pray because there's females that are connected that still don't know the Lord. Um, that's one of the grace upon my life. God brings me people that they don't even know who God is. But they, they just always, they always tell me, like, I want to have the family you have. I really want to serve the Lord. I really want to be bold in God. I, I want to serve that Jesus you always talk about. And, and, and I want them, I guess we pray for salvation first, healing, and definitely identity. Amen. And I mean, everyone watching, if, um, Prophet Bianca, she's in a pray now. And if anyone has a special petition, you could send it out forth now. I, I mean, if you have a, a word in your story, Prophet, um, to anyone watching or even to the ministry, this is the time. Um, Whatever's in your spirit. Amen. Father God, I just want everybody at home, if you are believing, we're gonna, I'm going to believe that God's going to speak prophetically into situations. But um, I just want to encourage you, if you are believing for something right now, to just extend your hands towards the screen, extend your faith. 
um, and to just stretch out your heart and say, Lord, I need to hear from you today. I want to hear from you today. And for those of you watching, I sense there's somebody watching on now and you've dipped in and out of this feed and you, as pastor was saying, you are not in a relationship with God. I don't know if you've never committed into a relationship with him or if you've just fallen away from him for a short time, but you're watching right now and you could not take your eyes off the screen for very long. You kept on getting drawn back in. Every time there was a distraction, you got drawn back in. That is the voice of God calling you right now. That is not a coincidence, but you have been drawn by the spirit of God tonight and God is prompting you tonight into a relationship with him. This is not about law. This is not about religion. This is about relationship with the God who loves you, who died for you. And tonight he has been reeling you in like a hook into your heart. He's reeling you in and he wants to give you life, restoration and healing. And so even now, I sense that there are those of you who are watching who you do have a relationship with God, but you are believing for family members. I sense very strongly that there are women who are interceding for their husbands and that there are people who are interceding for for family members, brothers, sisters, parents. And so even as we pray this salvation prayer, I believe that there's anointing that's gonna come upon this prayer right now that you are gonna be able to stand proxy for those that you're believing for salvation for. And you are gonna stand and commit that this is gonna be um, a, a, a reward that you are gonna reap, that you're gonna reap in their lives, that you are gonna stand and intercede for the salvation of other people. So if you are believing for salvation for loved ones, then connect your heart with this prayer now. If you want to make a commitment to Jesus, it would be my honor. And I want to word this this way for you. This is not about signing yourself up to a, to a, a religion. This is about introducing you to a savior. This is a relationship with Jesus who died for you. He lived and he died for you. So this is not a contract for a commitment to a religion, but this is introducing you to a savior who saved my life, who rescued me from death, who rescued me from the pit of hell. And he wants to do the same for you. And so we're just going to pray. Father God, I bring every single heart before you right now in the name of Jesus, wherever they're watching from, God, I thank you that tonight is a night that you have waited, Lord, that you are, I believe, arresting people's hearts right now, God. There are people watching and listening to my voice who can sense you pulling on the strings of their heart, even if they don't understand what their feeling is, but it's not condemnation, but it's conviction. It's your spirit drawing their heart into a relationship with you, drawing them in through humility. So Lord, I thank you right now for every single person who knows in this very moment that you are speaking to them. God, I thank you for every person who's extending their faith for the loved ones and salvations of people that they love and their family. Lord, I thank you and we agree with them and stand proxy for them right now in this moment for those salvations to come. But I'm just going to pray for that salvation prayer. Father, I thank you for those souls. I thank you for their lives. I thank you that Jesus, that you came and that you shed your blood and that you died to be the sacrifice for sins. Lord, even as we talked about tonight, remembering what happened in that garden when we were first introduced to sin and separated from you, that this whole Christian walk has been a love story of redemption, that this isn't a walk of condemnation, but our Christian walk is a love story of redemption. And that's the journey that we have from you is that from day one, you've loved the world so much farther that you sent your son to lay down his life with the ultimate plan of redeeming us into relationship with you. So God, I pray that in this moment, every single person watching, Lord, that they would receive that love that you have have for them, God, that they would open their hearts to start a journey of redemption with you, that Lord, that you would start in this moment, the process of healing and restoration for people who've been hurt, for people who've been abused, God, for people who've been betrayed and people who've been abandoned and people who've been rejected, Lord, that this would be the day of a journey of healing and restoration and redemption for every single person listening. And if that's you and you've decided in your heart that tonight is the night that you want to make that, that the best decision you could ever make to connect yourself with Jesus, our Lord, and Savior, I just want you to repeat these quick words after me. This isn't a religious prayer, but the Bible says if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that he's Lord. And so I'm just going to prompt you to do that, to put words to your faith that's in your heart right now. And I just want you to say this, Father God, I thank you that you sent your son, Jesus. Jesus, I thank you that you died for me. 
I thank you that as I start this relationship with you, as I hand over the reins of my life to you, as I hand over my story to you to be the author and finisher of my faith, that Jesus, that you would wash me and cleanse me of every past failure and every past hurt, every past mistake, that today Jesus would be a new chapter in my life, that the old is gone and that the new has become. Lord, I thank you that today you take over sovereign rule over my life, that God, I decree and declare you, Jesus, my Lord and Savior, and I'll walk with you every day of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. I just want to pray for somebody watching. I sense that you're watching and that you've been praying for the protection of a child. I don't know if it's a son or a daughter, but you've got a child that is in, um, involved in drugs and substance abuse. And you've been crying out to God for their welfare. I actually sense that right now you don't even know where they are, that you don't know where they're located, that they're not with you at home and you haven't heard from them. And you've been crying out to God for supernatural protection and deliverance for that child. And so we're just going to come into agreement with that. Father God, I thank you for that parent. Lord, I thank you for that child. I thank you that your word says that our children are inheritance, that they're for signs and wonders. And so God, we claim that right now in the name of Jesus. We command every enemy to flee. Lord God, we break and we sever every chain of addiction. Lord God, I pray that in this moment that that child that we are interceding for, that God, that they would have the conviction of your Holy Spirit right now come upon their hearts. That Father God, they would sense your voice speaking to them. Lord, I pray even to silence the voice of substances that come to bring a numbing and a distraction, that God, right now you would revive those senses so that they can feel and hear and sense your presence again. Lord, I pray for a reconnection of them to their family members, whoever this parent is praying. Lord, supernatural Naturally, I pray for a connection of that parent to that child now, that God, that you would come in and begin to mend that relationship between them, that Lord God, that you bring reconciliation in their family, and Lord God, we call upon a mighty testimony, Lord, this child and what they've experienced through the substance abuse, through these drugs, through whatever it is that the season has, um, has looked like for them, God, we speak a mighty harvest of souls over that person, we speak a birthing of a testimony that will give way to a ministry, that you would use this mightily in your kingdom in this end time harvest in the name of Jesus. I sense that there's somebody who's been abandoned in a relationship, that you're a woman, you're a female watching. Um, I don't know how old you are, but I sense that there's been a relationship that ended and you have not recovered from the end of this relationship. I don't know if it was a marriage. It was either a marriage or there was a proposal on its way, but it was a relationship that you had foreseen to be the ultimate till death do us part relationship and um, that that relationship ended and that you have not been able to cover, recover from that relationship. And God wants to start healing your heart. So right now, Lord God, I bring that person before you. Lord, I bring their pain. I bring their hurt. I bring their disappointment. I sense that God is specifically saying that you have told him your disappointment, that disappointment is one of the biggest areas that you're struggling with right now, is you are actually saying to the Lord God, I don't know that I can hope again. I don't know that I can believe you again. I thought this was going to be my time and my season, and I don't want to hope for this again and be hurt again. So God is dealing with that area of disappointment in your life, and I sense so strongly that the Lord is saying to you that faith in his word and his will is different to belief and hope for our own will and our outcome. And God is saying that what he delivered you from, you've not yet seen, but God has supernaturally preserved your life from an outcome that was not his will for you, that would have taken you out of the court of God. And God is saying to you, hold tight, my daughter, keep patience, keep your eyes on me, because ultimately at some point you're going to see what I, what I preserved you from and what I delivered you from because my hand is on your life. I sense God saying that it's not that I've that I've abandoned you. And it's not that I forget that I forgot me that you've been saying, God, this is my promise. Why have you forgotten that this is a promise you made to me? Why have you forgotten me? Everybody else has got this, but you've forgotten me. And I sense God is saying, it's because my hand is upon you. It's because I haven't forgotten you that I could not allow you to step into something that would have torn you away from me. So Father God, I pray that right now that that person, that woman listening, Lord God, that they would have an overwhelming sense of your presence in their life, in their room, wherever they're watching from. Lord God, that you'd start to mend every broken area. Lord God, that you would encourage them to continue to cry out to you honestly. Lord, I thank you that you are not afraid of our honesty. That God, even as the Psalms, even as David wrote, David would be honest in his pain and his frustration and his disappointment, even when he felt that you had been silent with him. He would often cry in Psalm 22 and he'd say, God, God, why have you been silent with me? Why aren't you speaking? My enemies are encamped around me. Lord, you're not intimidated or 
are afraid of us being honest in our cries to you, God, but you need our commitment to journey in this healing for you. So Lord, for every other person watching right now that has experienced pain or trauma, I sense that God is dealing specifically with this this evening, that in this last season, these last weeks of this lockdown, that God is specifically dealing with this in, in us in ladies at the moment. And he's saying that this is the time that I want you to nail it to the cross once and for all. There's somebody watching and you have an issue with a parent. There was a mother or a father that abandoned you and you, your whole life has used, you've actually used that as an excuse. And I don't mean this to not be sensitive to that pain. I understand that the, the, the trauma and the pain of being abandoned and rejected, but God is saying that you've used that as an excuse for 30 or 40 years now. And that excuse is actually, you've opted out of your calling because of what happened to you. And God is saying, this is the season that you need to nail it to the cross, forgive, release, heal, and deal with it. So that at the other end of this, that you can step into something might that I have for your life that has been postponed and delayed because I couldn't bring it about until you're done with and dealt with and resolve this heart issue from abandonment from your parents. So Father God, I thank you. Lord, that you're bringing a restoration and a healing work in hearts and in souls. Lord, I bring every broken soul, every discouraged heart. Lord, people who've had hope deferred and it's made their hearts sick. People who have cried out and believed for mountains to be moved and it hasn't happened in the same way. Even people who've been disappointed by how this, how this year has panned out. Lord God, I, I pray that right now in this moment, that Lord, that they would see God, <coughs> your sovereign rule and reign over their lives, that they would have an overwhelming understanding that God, that you are never out of control, that you never leave us, you never forsake us, you never abandon us, you never forget about us, that God, you are ever present, our ever present help in any time of need, that God, that you will, we cry out to you, and your word says that when we cry out to you, you are faithful to deliver us. So Lord, I pray for every person to reconnect themselves to your presence right now and to know that they can stretch forth and touch you to take hold of their healing. I pray for a boldness over women to commit to exposing even the most painful areas of their heart. I sense that there's somebody watching right now and you were very moved when we were talking about what triggers your heart and brings a reaction. And you know that, they, that it's not in your nature to be aggressive. And, but there are times that you become aggressive and it's a reaction. And you've been concerned over this aggression and asking God, this isn't part of your character, your nature. Why is it that sometimes I'm aggressive or I respond aggressively? And you actually, in fact, um, beat yourself up about it afterwards. You feel very guilty when you've lashed out at people. And you've been asking God what the root is of this aggression. And God is saying there's an undealt with brokenness in you and there's a trigger that um, people are putting their finger on and God is um, allowing that aggression to come to the surface not to shame you or to bring you condemnation but it's actually revealing to you that there's something broken within you and this is the consequence of it so that you can identify father I pray for that person right now Holy Spirit would you dig deep into the depths of their heart and and, and father uncover anything that's there that's hidden Lord even um, even brokenness or abandonment or detachment that happened in the womb, God, that has never been discussed. Lord, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would prophetically reveal that to that person right now, wherever the root is of this brokenness, of this pain. Father, that you could start a journey of restoration and healing and redemption. And Lord, we bring every single generational curse before you tonight, Lord, as we've come to talk about and to, to learn about and be conscious of how we can carry things inherited from our, our parents and our grandparents. God, I pray for every single person watching in this season that there would be a surfacing and an exposure of, of consequences of past generational sins, consequences of generational actions that have caused cycles in our lives that we've never been able to identify or break free from. Father, I pray that in this season, that you would bring a supernatural unveiling and uncovering of anything generational that's remained hidden in our bloodlines and our heritages so that we can put them before the cross, repent on behalf of, of our ancestors and our families, Father God, and come out of this season as, as completely free, completely restored, completely redeemed on fire, mighty men and women of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So I want to take this moment to thank Papa Bianca. Um, and we pray you come in December. I guess I send you the dates if you're available. Mm -hmm. I mean, who knows what's going up next in New York City, but we're praying for the best. And I want to take this moment for everyone that's watching. Um, Pastor Lewis is going to put in the, in the screen how to send the best seed to this ministry. And um, remember, we do this for the souls. Yes. 
I know church is about to open up in a few, in a few, but I'm believing God for harvest. Amen. We're believing God for a new place, for a new temple. Amen. We're believing God for expansion for 2020. The yes. Lord declared 2020 is God's agenda. The Lord declared that 2020 is a year of ownership. And we are holding on to every promise that the Lord made to this ministry. Amen. So we thank you guys for watching. We thank you, Prophet Bianca. Thank you for those words. Thank you for being so transparent with your testimony. We love you. I mean, it's an honor to know you, even if it's by Zoom. But we know that we soon will be all together to share so everyone can meet you at Mars. Thank you for your time. Um, I don't know if you have any last words to say. I am going to pray over the seat. But um, thank you. And for everyone watching, if that, was, if that word was for you, testify. Just say that to me. I know someone said that that's their son. Um, Wanda Kapo stated that. If any, any of the words given tonight by the prophet was, you know, basically speaking to your life, testify, give glory to God, amen. There's power in a testimony, amen. But thank you for Prophet Bianca. We hope to see you again soon. God thank bless you. your heart. And um, I just want to send my love to all of you out there. And, and uh, yeah, I really appreciate you and everything that God's doing. And I just pray that God is going to use you in ways. I just want to pray for you if that's okay. Definitely. I just wanted to do that. Father God, I thank you for your, your ministers, your instruments, your tools, your vessels. Father God, I pray for a unity in their ministry, a unity in their marriage, and a unity in their, um, in their influence and the people around them. Father God, I call in sons and daughters around them. I call in sons and daughters to assist them in their harvest, in their ministry, in their assignment. God, I call in those voices of encouragement to surround them. Lord, I pray for um, a silencing. I even sense that there are people who have been silently speaking around you to bring about a confusion and to bring about a distraction. Father, I come now in the name of Jesus and I call the silencing and a desisting of every agenda of the enemy against them in the name of Jesus. Would you bring a supernatural hedge of protection over them, around them, uh, about them, about their home, about their property. Lord, I even cover their finances in the name of Jesus. Lord, that you would guard them and keep them. I thank you, God, that you are going to use them in such a powerful way in this end time season that, God, that right at this moment, they have not even realized the areas that you are going to use them. I sense God saying that there's a versatility in you, a versatility within you, a versatility within your husband, and a versatility within your gift and you're called in your ministry where God is going to use you in, in a way that you are moldable and shapeable to go into various facets that right now that you believe that God's given you a word about um, three areas that you know that you are to press in this year but God is saying that there are there are more areas that he's going to use you into because there's a versatility a hunger and an openness and obedience in you that he's going to mold you and shape you to fit like a chameleon in so many different environments that you will just um that he's going to use you to to spread into multiple mountains to bring a kingdom influence a kingdom culture a kingdom order and to bring in a harvest and since God is saying that there is coming a season in your ministry where you're going to find that the finances are going to come because the harvest is going to come and God knows that he can trust you with finances because your heart is for souls and where souls are saved, which is God is agenda. He will always provide. There's always going to be provision. And God is saying to you that the more that you chase souls and the bigger that you chase this harvest of souls and of lives, that the provision is going to get greater and greater and greater to assist the vision that God has given you, that the more that you continue to chase after souls, there won't be a day that you have to lack or worry about the finances is to meet the needs to continue to go and to reap the harvest so father i thank you for every we just petition every need that they have right now every need that they have every desire they have and father we pray that you would show up supernaturally with power with might with wonder that you would be glorified through every miracle and every testimony that they have and that father god this season that they're going to enter into is going to be a season of incredible influence lord i thank you for a purity of heart that they have i thank you for an honoring obedience that they have have for you God and I pray that you would bring people I just send so strong to pray that, that that God is going to surround you with encouragers surround you with voices of wisdom and surround you with sons and daughters that won't want a thing from you but to serve you and assist the vision that you won't have to worry about the motives of the people who come underneath you to support the vision but you're going to have sons and daughters who are going to be there for the purpose of supporting and furthering the call of God in your life and what God has commissioned you to do so we thank you for their lives God we thank you for everything you're using them for we pray that you continue to bless them and increase them in jesus name
Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, um, the Lord spoke to me about you and, and this is, this is business idea that he's about to like literally just place in your hands mm -hmm. and it's a small boutique. And, and, and the Lord says to even the people that he's going to connect you with, with clothing is very specific. It's in this boutique, you're going to be dealing with women that are hurt, but you're going to clothe them in the spirit and in the natural. And, and I sense that the, it, literally what I, the Lord said in 21 weeks, approximately five weeks and a half, God is going to basically connect you to someone in that realm when it comes to clothing, designing, and you're going to build up this small boutique and even online. And that's going to be one of your sources of income. The Lord says it's going to be three more, but that's the main one. Many people think that you're going to just get money through ministry, but the Lord says, I place much more. Your mindset is a design. I mean, you're thinking all the time about designing clothing, jewels, even perfume. The Lord says, one day you will have your own scent. I see that. I see that it's a cologne. There's a perfume that you're going to be building because there's something with aroma and your calling. The Lord says, I have told you from the, from the start, I see that a very like early age when you just kind of smell something you sense the atmosphere even demons know you but you even smell them in the airs the devil knows very well what you're capable of doing and what you're capable of breaking in the spiritual realm as you pray god would, god is going to give you signs and, and and even strategies through this season and how to break i see it's like a very strong atheist spirit upon europe and god is showing you specific places to go and, and you're going to go alone, but there's going to be people covering you because you're going to go and anoint these places and you're going to see literally, literally demonic forces being broken down in the name of Jesus. What's coming for even the foundation with dealing with women that are being raped, abused, is going to expand. The Lord says, make this a not-for-profit because the grants will come, the mailings will come, and, and it's something that God is giving you a grace for it, not only in London, but even globally. And I see it expanding, working that website, get that organization as a non-for-profit. It's very separate from your parents' ministry, the Lord says. It's not connected. But God is giving you a team of even females that have been through it before, but now are serving the Lord. And even those that don't serve the Lord yet, they will come to the gospel. They will preach the message. They will stand firm. And you're going to have a team of females. I see 300 females, like the, just like the Gideons, and they're going to be strong with you. They're going to stand, and they're, they're going to take on, like literally, I see this not-for-profit taking places everywhere in the world. And it's going to be one person like specific, of every nation, of every town, of every country, of every state, just backing up the vision. And they will not steal, they will not touch, because even this I hear of the Spirit of the Lord saying, there's been people in your life that they have come in, they look good, but they don't sound good. They've stolen from their family, they've stolen from you. And 2020 is a year of multiplication. God is giving you back what the enemy stole seriously. I see millions of dollars being stolen. I see souls. I see division that try to creep up and they took half the church with them. The Lord says, don't curse them, but bless them because that was just a step stool. But what's coming is a multiplication. Your church is going to expand even through Latin America in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We thank you, Father God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. It's an honor. Thank you again. Thank you for every person that sent a seed forth. I'm going to take this time just to pray over it. Father God, we give you thanks. We give, we, Father God, we just bless every life that's mm -hmm. still watching, that's sending a seed forth, my God, because they know that it's God using his children to speak forth, Father God. Mm -hmm. Bless that seed, Lord, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Prophet Bianca. We talk soon. We yes. hope to see you soon. We love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.